हेलो स्टूडेंट गुड मॉर्निंग नाउ टुडे आई विल डिस्कस लाइन स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ हाइड्रोजन दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम द लास्ट क्लास लाइन स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ हाइड्रोजन वेन एन इलेक्ट्रिक डिस्चार्ज इज पास थ्रू गैसियस हाइड्रोजन the hydrogen when electric discharge is passed through gases hydrogen the h2 molecules dissociate and the energetically excited hydrogen atoms produced emit electromagnetic radiation of discrete frequencies the hydrogen spectrum consist of several series of lines named after their discoverers bomber bomber scientist bomber showed in 19 1885 on the basis of experimental observation that if spectral lines are expressed in terms of wavelength a wave number not wavelength expressed in terms of wave number nu r then the visible lines of the hydrogen spectrum obey the following formula what is that formula i am telling you nu bar is equal to 109.677 in bracket 1 upon 2 square minus 1 upon n square per centimeter <coughs> this is the wave number where <coughs> n is an integer equal to or greater than 3 greater than 3 that is uh, <coughs> n is equal to Three, four, five. Uh, this I have told about the wave number. The series of lines described by the formula are called the Balmer series. The Balmer series of lines are the only lines in the hydrogen spectrum which appears in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum the swedish spectroscopic uh, scientist its name is john swords john's uh, his name is uh, john's uh, ridberg ridberg john's ridberg noted that all series of lines in the hydrogen spectrum can be described by the following expression that is the nu bar is equal to 109.677 in bracket 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square per centimeter because it is a wave number wave number new bar where n1 is equal to 1 2 and n2 is equal to just in that you add 1 n2 is equal to n1 plus 1 and and again n1 plus 2 like that way here you have to understand I told you new bar is equal to one zero nine point six seven seven in bracket one upon n one square minus one upon n two square. Then n one is equal to maybe one, maybe two, maybe three like that way. But n two, n two depends upon n one. Means n two is equal to n one plus one. Or into maybe n one plus two 
again n1 plus 3 like that way. The value of 109.677 per centimeter is called the Rydberg constant for hydrogen. The the first the first five series of lines that correspond to n1 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are known as Lyman, Lyman series, Balmer series, Pastian series, Bracket series and p series. This is important respectively. Again, I am telling you because this is important that uh, the first five series of lines that correspond to n1 equal to 1, n1 equal, n1 equal to 2, 3, 4 and 5 means if you will give the value n1 equal to 1 then it will be Lyman series. If you will give the value n is equal to 2 then it will it will be Balmer series. If 3, Parsons series. If 4, Bracket series. If 5, P fund series respectively. <clears throat> now, uh, further you can say that uh, of all the elements, hydrogen atom has the simplest line spectrum. Many, el many elements are there, but they are heavier and hydrogen is lightest of all the elements hydrogen atom has the simplest line spectrum line spectrum becomes more and more complex for heavier atom there are however certain features which are common to all line spectra what are that then first feature that is a common feature that line spectrum of element is the line spectrum of element is unique and second there is a regularity in the line spectrum of each element these two I told you that the common feature that is the first one line spectrum of element is unique and second there is regularity in the line spectrum of each element these are the two common feature now question arises the question which arises are what are the reason for these similarities is it something to do with the electronic structure of atom these are the questions need to be answered uh, and uh, we will find actually we have to understand so many things later on we will find that the answer to these questions provide the key in understanding electronic structure of these elements yeah, this will help in understanding the electronic structure. Actually, you have to understand so many things. And uh, now we are just uh, started. And so we can't tell only in the beginning uh, all the things. Slowly and slowly you will understand uh, details of our details of our electronic structure. It is not so simple. Now I am going to discuss Bohr's model for hydrogen atom. This is the most important, most important and uh, interesting also. And uh, I told you that uh, about the atom, many scientists told so many things and in that so many things were useful. Then now Bohr's model again modified the previous models of other scientists and in Bohr model also 
some modification it, it actually it became failure it also has limitation but this is from what wars model told that is also useful not 100% failure it has a limitation yeah, because research continues it will not stop what one scientist told now other scientist will come and will continue continue like that way research will not stop in one place it will be modification will be there and it will be going on then now i am going to discuss bohr's model for hydrogen atom try to understand this is very very important niels bohr in 1913 was the first to explain quantitatively in the general feature of hydrogen atom structure and its spectrum though the theory is not the modern quantum mechanics it can still be used to rationalize many points in the atomic structure and spectra bohr's model for hydrogen 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 atom is based on the some postulates postulates assumption what are telling assumption assumptions hmm. then what are these postulates i will tell you uh, one by one and uh, these are very very important then first postulate i will tell you now uh, what is actually first postulate then just to listen carefully all four five postulates are there all are uh, you can say very very important four postulates are there total then now all four postulates that is the assumption you should understand only then after this postulates what conclusion was drawn i will tell you then first assumption uh, first postulate is that the electron in the hydrogen atom can move around the nucleus in a circular path of fixed radius and energy these paths are called orbits stationary states or allowed energy state here one more term new term he used stationary state for the orbits we i told you that there are three terms similar terms orbits cell energy level now fourth one for hydrogen atom niels bohr given new term stationary state or allowed energy state these orbitals are arranged concentric concentrically around the nucleus this is the first postulate now second postulate the energy of an electron in the orbit does not change with time however the electron will move from lower stationary state means orbit from from a lower stationary state to to a higher stationary state when required amount of energy is absorbed by the electron or energy is emitted when electron moves from higher stationary state to lower stationary state means very simple that electron will move from a lower stationary state to a higher higher energy state higher stationary state also you can tell when required amount of energy is absorbed by the electrons or energy or 
or when it will move or when energy is emitted when electron moves from when electro when elect, uh, energy is emitted that time also movement of electron takes place means uh, when, when energy is emitted that time also movement of electron takes place but it will be from higher energy state to the lower energy state or you can tell from higher stationary state to lower stationary state in these two condition electrons moves first i told you from lower to higher higher stationary state or from higher to lower stationary state now third third postulate the frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted when transition occurs between two stationary state that differs in energy by delta e is given by new is equal to delta e divided by h actually i told you that between the two energy levels some energy gap will be there suppose one energy has one orbit has energy e1 and other orbit has energy e2 then difference difference of energy that is the e2 minus e1 that is called delta e then how delta e is related to frequency then it is very easy already i have told you that e is equal to h nu last class i have discussed that e is equal to h nu then same formula here you are using only the thing is that in the place of e you are using delta e delta e is also energy but ch- change in the two orbitals energy between higher and lower that is the delta e but it is energy only hence uh, you have used the formula you are knowing e is equal to h nu that formula uh, is given here nu is equal to delta e upon h that is equal to delta e you can write e2 minus e1 divided by h this is actually third you can say postulate given by nils bohr again i am telling you the frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted when transition occurs between two stationary state that differ in energy by delta e is given by nu that is equal to delta e divided by h and that is equal to e2 minus e1 divided by h where e1 and e2 are the energies of the lower and higher allowed energy state respectively this expression is commonly known as bohr's frequency rule now next postulate that is the fourth postulate fourth and last postulate the angular momentum of an electron in a given stationary state can be expressed in the following equation what is that here you know already you know this is the common term angular momentum simple momentum is m into v that is the mass into velocity but this momentum change with distance means in atom many radius are there many orbits are there it means radius will change it may increase from lower to higher that is a radius we are telling r sometimes we are 
telling it by a small n also. Then here, if momentum you will calculate, keeping in mind radius, then that time, <coughs> then that time it will be called angular momentum because <coughs> uh, in atom orbits are circular. Always it is moving, moving angle will be changing. That's why it is called <coughs> angular momentum. <coughs> angular momentum and it is called MBR. Then this <coughs> fourth, uh, fourth postulate it is telling about the <coughs> angular momentum. The angular momentum of an electron in a given stationary state can be expressed as in the, uh, in the form of following equation that is the MBR, here M is mass of electron, that is called ME, a small you can write with the M, then MBR is equal to N into H upon 2 pi, this is very important, MBR is equal to N into H upon 2 pi, where N is equal to, N may be 1, it may be 2, it may be 3. Thus, an electron can move only in those orbits for which its angular momentum is integral multiple, multiple of h upon 2 pi. That's why, that's why only certain fixed orbits are allowed. Electron can't move in any orbit simply. Electrons moves around the nucleus, it is correct, but where it will move, which in which orbit it will move, that is a fixed, then that is the integral model, it will move only in that orbit which is integral multiple of h upon 2 pi, means you have uh, here I told you n into h upon 2 pi, n may be 1 first orbit n may be 2, second orbit, n may be 3, third orbit, then integral multiple of h upon 2 pi. That's why only certain fixed orbits are allowed, only there electron can move. Now I am going to discuss, I told you from these postulates, four postulates, uh, this theory orbit has uh, this uh, Niels Bohr has given theory his theory then in his theory that these four postulates assumptions uh, that he has considered then after that uh, what con what conclusion he has done from his theory or from his experiment what conclusion he has drawn that I am going to discuss. Point wise I will tell you that uh, what are the you can say that points. Then first point I am telling you that uh, according to the Bohr's theory for hydrogen atom, first the stationary state for electron are numbered n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. These integral numbers are known as principal quantum number. Actually, quantum number we will discuss later on. I told you so many terms are there, now we have to understand. Okay, details we, we will, uh, full question is asked on quantum number. We will discuss uh, later on. Then here, first, uh, first thing in the Bohr's, Bohr's theory for hydrogen atom that the stationary states for electron are numbered as n is equal to 1, 2, 3. These integral numbers are known as principal quantum number. This is the first. Second, the radii of their stationary states are expressed as 
radius i am talking about the radius radius of uh, you can say orbit in an atom many orbits may be there then what are their radius because all are circular actually here i want to tell you i uh, it is a, according to the niels bohr it is then telling that uh, orbit is circular but here for your higher knowledge advanced knowledge i want to tell you that summerfield one scientist is there he told about this it is not circular is only one case circular is only one case actually it is just elliptical elliptical means here it has length and breadth elliptical just like egg egg you have seen it is not fully circular it's a, it has two radius one a long and a breadth then according to the summer field that uh, actually uh, atom atom or orbit you can tell orbit inside the atom is uh, not fully circular it is one case it is actually elliptical it has a two radius one is a long radius horizontal other is a vertical radius both differ just like egg you can keep in mind that type orbit is of that type but circular is one case what niels bohr told that i have told you only here this is the advanced knowledge i have told you anyhow the the radi means radius of the stationary states are expressed as according to the niels bohr r n small r n means number of orbit may be first orbit may be second orbit may be third orbit like that way r n r n is written with r small n then r n is equal to n square a 0 this is very very important in solving the numericals this will be used this formula will be used r n is equal to n square a 0 where a 0 its value is constant fixed 52.9 pm means picometer thus the radius of the first stationary state called the bohr orbit is 52.9 pm first orbit hydrogen first orbit it's uh, or it's you can say radius is 52.9 pm picometer why because n is equal to 1 hydrogen has one electron that will be in the first orbit then n is equal to 1 then formula is there rn is equal to a square into a0 then n is equal to 1 that's why 1 into 1 1 only into a0 and a0 value is fixed 52.9 picometer hence you can say this you can tell that the radius of the first stationary state called the bohr's orbit is 52.9 pm normally the electron in the hydrogen atom is found in this orbit that is the n is equal to 1 as n increases the value of r will increase it is obviously in other words the electron will be present away from the nucleus if n will increase in other words the electron will be present away from the nucleus that is clear cut so now after the nucleus only orbit will start then as the n will increase orbit number will increase electron will be far from the nucleus this i told about the second second point third point the most important property is associated with electron is the energy of its stationary state means orbit what will be the energy of different different orbit you should know one should know then you know that for each orbit electron will be different 
then how will you calculate energy possessed by the electron when it will be in the first orbit what will be the energy when it will be in the second orbit what will be what will be the its energy means electron energy when it will be in third then one uh, you can say niels bohr calculated one expression that expression is very very important in calculating the energy that is the en capital en again n is associated with e he will tell the number of orbit uh, first or the second orbit third orbit like that then en is equal to minus capital r h capital r down h h means read work constant r h scientist name r h is called read work constant then e n is equal to minus r h in bracket 1 divided by n square a small n square that is orbit number of orbit n may be 1 n may be 2 n may be 3 where r h is called read work constant and its value is after the calcul this calculating r h is because it is constant read work constant question is asked what is its value or uh, it is used in calculating the energy of uh, energy of the electron then r h value is 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 jol it is just like energy again i am telling you its value is r h value is r h equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power Minus eighteen jol, the energy of the lowest state, also called as the ground state, lowest state. I study last class. I told about the lowest normal state that is also called ground state, and its value is e. Easily you can calculate because here in formula I will put the value of n square is there one upon n square. You put the value of n is equal to one. in case of hydrogen then it will be simple value of en is equal to minus rh in bracket 1 upon n square n is equal to 1 and so obviously en is equal to minus rh a minus rh value is fixed hence its ground state energy of the ground state means first orbit uh, or lowest energy state is en is equal to minus 2. One eight into ten to the power minus eighteen. Ah, uh, in means simply you put the value in bracket one upon one square because n is equal to one. Then you will get simple. Ah, uh, we can say value of energy in the n is equal to one means the first orbit or ground state or you can tell lowest state is equal to minus two point one eight. Into ten to the power minus eighteen jol. The energy of the stationary state. Actually, all our orbits are called stationary state only. Stationary state equal to one. Means n is equal to one. Stationary scale state means a second orbit for the second n is equal to two. For third n is equal to n is equal to three. Because stationary state is represented. as orbit then for the second orbit what will be the energy then en by putting the value n is equal to 2 in the formula you will get en means e2 e down 2 means for the second orbit its value will become uh, after putting the value in the n n is equal to 2 formula will come uh, final result will come for the second orbit energy That is a minus zero point five four five into ten to the power minus eighteen jol. Then, like that way, by keeping the value of n, you can cal calculate for third, fourth, fifth, like that. Um, now I am going ahead. Actually, one thing here I want to tell you that uh, you can derive the expression. For uh, radius, radius of orbit in an atom, 
and as many radius are there then here directly i told you r value radius value directly i told about the energy expression i told you you know like that way velocity of electron when it is moving in orbit what it is what is its velocity when moving in a in an orbit what is its energy and what is the radius of the orbit these three things here radio expression for radius i told you expression for energy also i told you but it can be derived also actually uh, derivation is a complicated difficult despite that i uh, i will uh, convince it and uh, i have given i will send you on the you can say one sheet derivation also generally nowadays uh, questions are asked the multiple choice question derivation they are not asking but uh, i am sending one sheet derivation also derivation is uh, actually people still complicated but after reading all the things uh, you will find uh, i made it easy it is easy actually and it will be used for higher higher class students those who are preparing for the higher competitive examination there they will use for you people final result means for uh, those who are general competition those who are writing for medical engineering for them that expression is sufficient but for the higher students uh, like bsc msc for them this is required okay now i am continuing here only in the third point Uh, because this is very very important what i am going to discuss when the electron is free from the influence of nucleus the the energy is considered as zero this is very important point the electron in this situation is associated with a stationary state of principal quantum number n is equal to infinite infinity n is equal to infinity just like n is equal to 1 is the first first orbit here here it is n is equal to infinity now again and also one more thing it is called ionized hydrogen atom ionized you know that when electron goes outside when electrons any atom gives the electron or lose the electron then then an ion is formed then when n is equal to infinite then you can tell it is in ionization state this is very very important that is called ionized hydrogen atom when the electron is attracted by the nucleus and is present in orbit n the energy is emitted and its energy is lowered very important things again i am telling you when uh, when electron will be near the nucleus then what will happen the energy is emitted when the electron is attracted by nucleus and it present in orbit n the energy is emitted and its energy is lowered and its energy is lowered that is the reason for the presence of negative sign in the equation what i have told you correct now next point means fourth d fourth point i am going to tell you of bohr's theory fourth point bohr's theory can also be applied to the ions corresponding only one electron only one electron similar to that present in hydrogen atom like hydrogen hydrogen like atoms are there for example helium he plus you know that in helium two electron is there then he plus means one electron it lost then 
it will be called H e plus. One thing here I want to tell you, after losing the electron, it gets positive positive sign. Means H has lost one electron, then H one plus H plus. Correct? Like that way here, H e has two electron and one electron it lost. Then now in helium only one electron is there. That is called proton. And H e one plus. Like that way lithium has Two electron, uh, three electron. Then when it will lose two electron, then only one electron will be left out. Then I need to be represented as a lithium two plus because it has lost two electron. Then in all three cases, and one more uh, fourth one you understand. Uh, actually, beryllium, beryllium Be three plus four electrons are there in that three lost. Then Three lost means three positive charge, but only one electron is left. Then in this three helium, lithium, beryllium, only one electron is there. That's why it is called hydrogen-like atom. And uh, like that way, other also may be there. Okay. Then this is very very important. Then according to the fourth Bohr theory, fourth Bohr theory can also be applied to the ions containing. Only one electron, huh? similar to that present in hydrogen atom. For example, helium one plus, lithium two plus, beryllium three plus, and so on. The energies of the stationary states associated with these these kinds of ions, also known as hydrogen-like spectra. Also known as hydrogen-like spectra, are given by the expression. Same type of expression is there. Minor change is there. Then what is the expression for this ions? How will you calculate energy? Then energy that is the E n that is equal to minus two point one eight into ten ten to the power minus eighteen in bracket Z square capital Z. That is the atomic number, mass number. J square divided by n square. Huh? Then here difference is only in the previously for in the case of hydrogen only one was there, but here J is there. J square divided by n square. Then J why? Because they have mass number different. Na huh? helium, lithium, beryllium. They have. Mass number, different mass number. That's why Z has been used. Then now for this type of uh, can say hydrogen-like atom, energy expression is E n that is equal to minus two point one eight into ten to the power minus eighteen in bracket Z square divided by n square joule. This is the expression and ready for the radius for the expression. Ready radius. How will you present? Then for this expression is given like that, R n small R n, n means number of orbit. Then for that, now again same way, what we discuss for the hydrogen, here fifty two point nine n square divided by z picometer. Here z they have used now same meaning because. Z means here mass number. All mass all have different mass number. Atomic number they have different. That's why Z has been used here. Then R n is equal to fifty two point nine n square divided by Z picometer. This is the expression I have told you where Z is the atomic number and has value. Z may be two three. For lithium and for helium and lithium atoms, respectively, from the above equation, it is it is evident that the value of energy becomes more negative, and that of radius becomes smaller with increase of Z, because Z is down, then obviously it will be less. This means that electron will be tightly bound. To the nucleus. Now, last point 
of Bohr's theory I am telling you. It is also possible to calculate the velocities of electrons moving in this orbits. Actually, already I have told you, I will give that, I will provide a sheet in video, just you go through, then three things you can calculate, I have given derivation, uh, this, uh, that is first for the energy, second for the radius and third for the velocity. And uh, you can go through, if you are interested, this is for advanced uh, knowledge, if you want you can go through, it is a to be question will be asked only when you are going to appear in the examination which is taking, you can say written examination, written examination means question answer they will ask, you have to write, that time big question in the form of big question, this will be asked and marks will be also up, I generally it is asked in the uh, this UGC examination. Okay. Then now today I am stopping only here. Okay. Again we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.